been so long that I almost have forgotten how to start <laughs> off the podcast. But my name is Sharon Graff. I almost said my maiden name for some very <laughs> random reason. Again, it's been a while. <laughs> uh, and uh, welcome to the Modern Skein podcast. Um, like I said, my name is Sharon, and I'm the owner of the Modern Skein, which is a yarn shop here in Montgomery, Texas. And I'm Becky, store manager at the Modern Skein. You may notice a little bit change of background. We rearranged this room forever ago, but yep. we haven't podcast since. I was out of town, then I got sick, and it really has only been two weeks, but it seems much longer than that. So, yeah, nope. it's crazy. It's almost July, almost my birthday month. This year's button going by so crazy, yes. Wild, wild, wild. So, hello, and uh, hope you are having some enjoyable knitting and watching time, or sewing, or crocheting, or weaving, or whatever you might craft, or maybe you just want to sit and stare, you know? I kind of did that all last week. I did get knitting done, and I actually finished a shawl, but I already gave it to Josh. It was a sample I was finishing up for him, so I don't even have it to show you guys. But it was a real pretty fingering weight shawl. Nice. Nice and stripey, I think, yeah. from the sample I saw. It was the um, Espos Trico pattern Sun Comes Up. So it was originally supposed to be three colors. I did it in just two, one main color and then the stripe. Um, real simple, mindless kind of knitting. So if you're looking for a project like that, it's also a great stash buster. Honestly, if you've got three random skeins that will at least go or coordinate together, um, or you, if you don't do three colors, you need two of your main color, FYI unless you make it smaller. Um, honestly though, you could stash bust with not even full size skeins and That's just fun. do a whole bunch of scraps. Like do your contrast color as like white or black or gray. Mm -hmm. um, and then every section, because the sections are like four or five inch blocks of, of color and then go through and just use fingering weight scraps your leftovers from socks or shawls or sweaters whatever that would be really fun and scrappy yeah use up some of that i feel like i have a giant bag starting and like it just keeps mm -hmm. getting bigger of leftovers well actually linda and i were here monday and we cleaned out the back room and we have that pile she took yeah. some of it to go through um <clears throat> and uh do some stuff but yeah Yes. It never ends for piles of leftovers. I say that. Some people are really, really good about using them up. And, you know, another great stash busting project. I don't know why I'm going on this, but another great stash busting project. Um, Stephen West's Penguano. And I, if you guys follow him, which you should, I mean, the puppy pictures. The puppies are adorable. <laughs> if nothing else. Um, but he just did a new video tutorial um, on the Penguano. I really love his free video tutorials he's been doing, almost like mini classes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's up on YouTube, and he walks you through how to do it. And the Penguano was originally designed as a stash bust project. Now, he gives you yardages and stuff if you want to, like, do totally cohesive and pick colors and and do it I'll say brand new with new skeins of yarn but honestly the one that I did um, and I actually I have another one cast on I just need to go back and actually like it's a winter project for me but I know some people who have done it out of cotton and linens mm, and so you could good. totally do it because it's short sleep so yeah. it's it would be super fun but mix and match and just pull out all your scraps and it's a great stash bust. A lot of his projects honestly are great to use up. Leftover bits, maybe you need to get one or two skeins to have like a cohesive thread throughout the whole thing, but you can use up a lot of stash. So there's my rant on using up <laughs> leftovers. Yes, exactly. Here's what <laughs> 
here's what to do. Don't Impromptu do what I do. Stash busting episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I would normally show a finished object, but I don't have yeah. one to show. I very nearly have one that's still a whip, but I can't. It's also a secret test now. Yeah, so. I can't show. Awkward. That's okay. Yeah. So. My. We've made a lot of progress since I, I've seen you, yes. so I literally <laughs> have not seen her since this morning, so. Yes. It's, it's been wild. It yeah. really has. Um, you know, sometimes the summer's not exactly what you planned, and mm -hmm. that's okay. You know, you get through it. So, I honestly don't even know if this was started when we podcast last. I feel like if it was, it was like maybe Barely. like six inches of I, starting. I, yeah, I actually don't think it was. I think I was talking about it. Yeah. Because we showed the Mad Tosh. We had just gotten the Mad uh -huh. Tosh in. That sounds right. <clears throat> so, this is my Petite Picot, also a free pattern from Espace Tricot. Every summer, I seem to knit like two to three of their free patterns. I don't know why. I just do. But this is Petite Picot, um, and I'm using uh, the Mad Tosh Rossinante as my main color. So it starts off it's this real simple garter um, triangle, and you increase on the one side, and then once you get to the certain width, then you start um, switching over to stockinette until the whole thing goes into stockinette and so I'm almost there and then once I reach that point then uh, the fun happens and I start striping in my contrast color and decreasing stitches and then I'll go back with this and pick up and do um, a border with this so this is neon peach so bright <laughs> so <laughs> it's like totally blows out. yeah it's so fun. So neon peach, um, to do petite pico, you need two balls of your main color. This is my second ball. Um, the thing I also like about Espace Trico patterns is they do a really good job of really pretty much using up most of your yarn. Um, so no stash busting required. Exactly. So you feel really good. Scrap busting. Scrap Sorry. busting. Whatever. Um, and you don't end up with a lot of leftovers typically. Um, and then this will be my contrast. So one contrast, two main colors. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So this has been my travel knitting, my sick and bed knitting, all the above. Although, honestly, I barely knit last week. When you're running a 103 degree fever, you don't feel like knitting. Yeah. Totally honest. Um, That's fair. Yeah. I am good to go. You know it's kind of crazy when the doctor walks in, gives you a pill, or actually the nurse, then the doctor comes in, he's like, how many of those pills did she give you? I'm like, two. He's like, hold on. And he comes back and gives me three more. It's like, oh, you're going to feel better after this. I'm like, I hope. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> so, um, anywho, Petite Picot by Espace Tricot. If you want to know how to spell it, it's Petite and then Pico would like the bind off. P-I-C-O-T-S, actually, I think. Um, and of course, Ravelry is picky, but it is on there and it's pictured in like a sage green and forage green. Um, real pretty, but that's it. Um, I actually have another whip. I know I did not have this cast on last time pretty sure there's a layer of skepticism it's been so long <laughs> I, since we filmed i don't and remember I think it's, <laughs> and it's also like extra long for us <clears throat> excuse mm -hmm. me because the one that was most recently published we filmed like a week before it was released yeah so, so it's, it's been it, a long time it's been like six weeks since we filmed a podcast it, it five or six for sure So, I think so, because I'm pretty it's been at least sure a month. it was before Memorial Day that we filmed. Anyway, I don't know. Um, this is a sample 
that Josh asked for, and I like to knit it, so I was like, yeah, I'll knit this. Um, I feel like since it's been so long, if you're a brand new viewer, you should know Josh is my husband, but he also is the owner and dyer behind Red Stag Fiber Yarns. Um, so my husband's not just asking for a random woman's cowl to wear. <laughs> He's doing a sample. <laughs> I mean, it's very much unisex, honestly. It would look really nice under a pea coat. <laughs> I mean, maybe not in these colors, but <laughs> I mean, it's I not mean, terrible. The, the most strange part would be asking for a cowl in Texas in the summer. <laughs> time. Yeah, that's that's the weird part. Um, but no, he, he sends off trunk shows to other yarn shops and things like that. And so he's actually got a whole bunch um, coming up where there'll be like overlap. And so he wanted another um, project um, to send. And this is the Shift Cowl by Andrea Mowry. Um, so the Shift Cowl was originally written for Spin Cycle. Um, it's listed as a sport weight pattern, but I have actually, this is my second one, like I said, I've always knit it in fingering weight. Um, I just go down one needle size and I really love the effect that you get. So this is three colors um, of cottage sock and I just switch out the colors per um, the pattern. Um, uh, where are we at? I think this is Aberdeenshire French waistcoat and antique rose. So I really like how subtle the antique rose yeah. is in here. Um, and then you get a little more of a pop with the blue. But it's going to be real pretty, kind of soft, subtle. The other one I did was much brighter um, with like springtime colors, um, English rose and key and a sunshine, I think. So this one's a nice kind of almost neutral option. But that's getting kind of close, actually. Um, I just haven't knit on that in three weeks. Knitting mojo, not super been there. <clears throat> and then now it's like, I don't want to knit on anything. I want something new. So I cast something else on. So, but I'm going to stop hogging all the time and let Becky share. You can, that's not a test, is it? It is not. Okay. I've got, I have two tests <laughs> right now. One of them I know I can show and the other one I don't think I can show, but I'm not 100%, so I'm going to err on the side of caution. That's okay. very. Um, but I can show off my... Of course, I'm sitting here knitting on it, so now I'm awkwardly starting a row, but it's fine. Um, this is the Feel Good Shawl by Andrea Mallory. This was very much a impromptu, hey, let me put together some color combinations for an Instagram post like two weeks ago, and then I looked at this combo, and I was like... So sorry, guys, that's not making it onto the photo, <laughs> onto the Instagram post. I'm taking that home, and I'm starting it right now. Nice. <laughs> um, but I'm knitting it up in Chelsea Lux, uh, Lux DK. Um, this is just still the first section. It's kind of that big section of just two-color brioche. You work on this for a good bit of the shawl, and then you end up... Um, just playing around with different brioche textures. So you go to a single color brioche, which will be this golden favorite leather boots color. Mm. And then the border is double brioche. Um, and I'm going to be using the robin's egg and sunflower colors held, not held together, but y'all know what I mean. Yep. <clears throat> Brioched. A brioche. Brioche. A brio duo. Yes. So sunken treasure is my kind of nice beige It's such a good color because it's like it's beige with a little peach, a little rose gold yeah. kind of all together, but it doesn't scream peach or pink. Really, it's just yeah. neutral. It's lovely. And then the green on the back side is eucalyptus, I think. We're going to find out. Is it eucalyptus energy? It's eucalyptus energy. Okay. <laughs> So, very nice. Real pretty. Yeah, I'm loving working on it. It's been one that hasn't gotten a lot of love since I really first started it because I had to prioritize other stuff, but um, it's a delightful shawl. And I, it, it is a feel good project. So, well, that's nice. <clears throat> yeah. What you got there? <laughs> so, 
Um, we will be vending at. Oh no, is that gonna mess it up? Okay, good. We're still rolling. Okay. Notifications <laughs> As, popping up, guys. Uh, I normally High turn stress. them off, so I was like, "Oh no!" Because one time before it cut everything off. But anyway, um, we are vending at DFW Fiber Fest in September. Obviously, in Dallas. Tec- well, technically, it's in Irving, Las Colinas, but yes. if you don't know the area, it's Dallas, basically. Um, so we are vending there, and four weeks ago now it seems like um, <laughs> I had the bright idea when Easy V was launched by Caitlin Hunter that we would have matching sweaters I should for... go get my collar because yeah. it's sitting over yeah. there <laughs> so be right back yes so with some of the yarns that we're going to take um, to uh, show at the show to show at the show um, I we pulled together some palettes, and we were able to pull together a very me palette and then a very Becky palette. Mm-hmm. So we'll have the same but different sweaters, which is going to be super fun. So for me, my main body color is um, the Sandus Garn Duo, which is a 50-50 cotton wool. This is the colorway Ochre. Uh, we will have that restocked for um, the show. And then... My contrast colors, so it technically calls for three colors of a variegated or a marldy spin cycle type yarn. Yep. The yardage on Dapple would mean that one color I would need a second skein of those three. So I went ahead and just did four, and so I'm just kind of changing the color combo on my own. But my, so I'm doing Dapple for my contrast colors. And. These are my contrast colors. So this is <laughs> That's the most like Sharon Dapple palette ever. Ta-da! Natural <laughs> plinth. This is the newest um, Cosmos, which is like a very navy blue, mm-hmm. and then Anchor, which is the almost black. Um, so good, so good. And I uh, just started last night into the first little bit of color work and you can't I mean I have like that much you can't really see it but I am loving it so far I did think this neckband would never end um but yes loving it so main body is the ochre uh and then so I'm just now starting in this section right here Ta-da. Yay. Super excited. <clears throat> so show your colors. Kay. So I'm using the same yarns. I'll yep. preface it with that. <clears throat> so um, duo for main body and then the dapple. My duo is the warm brown color. So it's honestly really pretty close to her original mm-hmm. pink palette yeah. that she had in that sweater. And then I paired that with... I have not cast this on yet. Um, but that's paired with... Current, which is that really nice mm-hmm. deep kind of plum color and then blaze really rich brick and blueprint for a pop of blue in there that's gonna be so nice yeah so it's gonna be really nice this will be my palette when i get to it yes i've got some time so you have a little bit of time yeah Yes. I have a feeling that one of those colors might get switched up. Because there's something new coming. Oh, God. Okay, it might get switched out, y'all. Yeah. (laughs) Can't share it yet, but there may or may not be new colors of Dapple coming. Yeah, that might switch. We'll see what happens, friends. I'm not saying anything else, but... But speaking of Dapple, um, I just pulled more over there because we got a couple colors restocked last week that we were out of. If you follow us on Instagram, there was a real fun rainbow post of these that Sharon did yesterday. Yes, and I'm going to very aesthetically pleasing. show this to you again because it's just so good. Mm-hmm. So Blaze, which 
like he showed you. Honeycrisp. Love this one for summer. It's like almost neon red in some skeins. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Um, medallion, which is like a sunflower color. Canopy. Mm -hmm. There is a color, I just realized what you find, that we're missing, and that's seafoam. We did sell out of that between yeah. placing orders and everything, but it's very, very similar to Canopy, Very, honestly. very close. Um, Cosmos. Uh, black current, or just current. I always want to say black current, but it's not. Yeah. Cerise, really pretty purple. Uh, black walnut, really nice. Very like a gray brown. Yeah. Um, a very black walnut type color. Mm -hmm. The natural <clears throat> plinth, compare those so you can see. And then anchor. So those are your, your cream and then your two grays that they offer. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so hopefully, I'm trying to think the dates, July sometime is when you want to be on the lookout for yes. some new colors in that. So, yay. Um, other than that, we are pretty much fully stocked um, in sweater quantities in almost all of those. Staple is a fantastic summer yarn. It's 60-40 um, organic uh, wool, but it's very lightly spun. Um, so it's very light mm -hmm. in weight. It's not heavy. Uh -huh. Mixed with 40% organic Texas cotton, which is really nice because it's a local yarn to us. Um, perfect for summer knits. So summer cardigans, summer sweaters, or just anything you want to be lighter weight. Um, it's a DK weight to knit with. I've knit my Gloam out of it. We've had several people knit like vests, popover, slipover type items. Mm -hmm. uh, several people have knit gloams. Several people have knit um, other sweaters yeah. out of it. It's got great stitch definition. It's got that great... Now, I say great stitch definition. I wouldn't use it in like a heavily cabled, all over cabled no. anything, but I'm talking about stitch definition more like you could do lace work, um, textured knitting, so like knits and pearls, ribbing, things like that, color work, um, slip stitches would be good. Um, you could do, I don't see a problem where you couldn't use do brioche in this. Um, mm, and it's not that it's not gonna hold some cables. You could do some cables, but I just wouldn't pick like, um, I wouldn't do like a Winter's Beach cardigan no, out of it. No, no. Um, I think it because of the heatheredness, really, more so than anything else, you're going to lose some of the um, yeah, the definition in that. But it's great for color work. Um, you're doing that uh, one sheep camp sweater. Yep. You got sheep camp going. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a languishing whip at this point, but it's these two with medallion as my main color really love those together and we have another customer in the shop that is mm -hmm. also doing sheep camp yep. using some of the blues yep um i'm trying to think what else <clears throat> oh and then we just had another customer do a gorgeous shawl if you're not into garments gorgeous summer shawl yes. tara t-e-r-r-a by mm -hmm. hoagie locatelli i want to say she used three skeins of dapple it was not very much honestly yeah it was um, it was a small amount honestly more definitely than, not than more than expect. four um yeah. and there are 50 gram skeins so they're a little bit smaller um and it's stunning she just did that and finished it for our plant-based knit along dapple would qualify for the plant-based knit along mm -hmm. um and it's gorgeous and again that pattern has some textural lace very yeah. simple and not not overly lacy or anything very but approachable it's lace gorgeous gorgeous yeah. um and it just looks stunning in the dapple so <sighs> trying to think anything else i think that's it as far as the dapple and then the easy v yeah. that's all i have for knitting honestly I do have a crochet project, but I think I left it at the house, and honestly, I've got, like, not much done on it, so, and I might switch out. Bust that out next time. Yeah. You might see it next time. You might not. I don't know. 
So, <clears throat> trying to think what else should we talk about? Oh, yes. Yeah, these four skates yes. sitting right here. <laughs> so, this came in yesterday. Lenny and Santa's Garn came out with four new summer colors in Lenny. And they're cool colors. They're so good. Such good colors. So, we have sandstone right here. It is different than Brent Sand. If you're, if you've bought Brent Sand before and you're like, that looks the same, it is different. Um, this is brighter than Brent Sand. This is pistachio, so a real pretty green. This is blue hortensia, and this is blue mint. Um, so this is definitely more in the seafoam type blue mint color range beautiful denim blue and then the pistachio is Hold those side by side it is so green see. yeah very um, much pistachio ice cream color very perfect really so good yes so they good. are so good and i've already had there are several orders waiting to be fulfilled for uh <laughs> blue hortensia i think is the best seller right now um I mean, that's a good denim it is a really good denim and i feel like that's the one area that sometimes is lacking in sandness garns colors is blues um so that's a great yeah. blue option um yeah so like i said we got um plenty of quantities of all four of the new colors and the linny um, they're all available online and we also have um, some of the more popular colors fully restocked as well we have plenty of like the beiges oh there's sorry yeah the olive we have pretty much all of the spring colors that we got in late because yeah. of the delays um, pretty much all of those, the shocking pink and the bright green and everything else. So yep. definitely um, now's the time to get your Linny in and uh, knit some fun summertime projects. If you're looking for a project for Linny, of course, there's you can pull up on Ravelry. You can pull up the Linny yarn and see under suggested projects a ton of things. Um, it's a great DK to worsted weight yarn. I say to worsted. It is listed technically as a worsted weight yarn, but it is thin. Yeah. Um, I call it more of a light DK personally. I don't know if that's going to be a great option there, but you can kind of see yeah. like it, it's not. It's not a thick yarn, but if you think about it, most of the time for your summer knits, you are working at a looser gauge anyway. Yes. So it works. Um, I've actually seen so many people knit the Deshane out of this. Even though the Deshane was originally done in a Aran weight linen, there, I, like every day there's another new finished project in Lenny of a Deshane, and it would be perfect. And so mm -hmm. I'm really, really considering knitting that. Um, yeah. Ooh, out of that slate color. Yeah. Be good. It would be good. Be real good. It would. Um, but... <clears throat> that the anchor summer tea mm -hmm. um summer nuss summer nuss i think is another one that's real popular um there are several there's milatopin which i had um spelling i'm not even gonna attempt it but if you pull up the linear yarn you'll see it it's like on page three it's a really cute striped option just like a short sleeve thing. Um, the peacock tee, which I'd knit, it's right behind me, right there, peacock tee. Um, the gal who designed peacock tee actually designed several others. The Fia top is real pretty for a sleeveless option. Mm -hmm. Tons and tons of options for Lenny. Um, and I would say Lenny for at least here in the Texas area slash basically southern half of the United States. Lenny can honestly be almost like a three season wear garment. Um, it's nice enough to wear into the fall and early spring, honestly. Um, is it gonna give you a ton of warmth during the winter? No, but if you're in a coastal area, if you're in Florida, it's year round. You know, yeah. certain parts of Texas, if you're in deep south Texas, it's going to be a year-round type sweater for you. Um, 
if you're allergic to wool, it's a great option. Um, so, because there's not a drop of wool in it at all. Yeah. Um, so, some options for you. Possibilities. Yes. Um, <clears throat> oh, I wanted to show the Atenti bags because we tried, we were going to show them last week and we ran out of time. That's right. And um, we have just a few of the Atenti items that we got in months ago. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys in case you hadn't seen them. They are listed on the website. Um, this is the last of our little notions pouches um, that we got in. This is super cute. It looks woven. It probably is woven, but it looks really cute. Um, nice long like length too. too. You could really like you could put longer DPNs in there. Exactly. That's kind of what I got this for is like DPNs. If you want to put pencils and maybe you have a longer ruler or like a sock ruler or you have like the likey extended length needles, things like that. You just want a little thing to carry it all. This yeah. is great. It looks pretty. Throw it in your bag. Um, then we have needle cases. These are designed pretty much for um, fixed needles, but honestly, you can, you can make it work. It has like the little pocket protectors um, and some other pouches in here, but I have used these before for fixed needles. Uh, interchangeables as well. So we have the gray llama, which is always fun. This real pretty blue, this one's blue ink, I think. No, indigo, sorry, indigo. This one is blue ink. We have the leopard print. And then this really pretty, what do we call this one? Regina, it's like a yellow brocade. So those are what's left of the needle excuse me, needle cases. And Thanks. then there's also, so in this style, we have this one, which is the lacy blue, but then we also have it in the leopard print. Um, so it's this same leopard print here um, where the blue would be. Um, but that's the last two of this style. There are pockets on all the outsides and on the inside and it's lined with like a leopard print as well and then these are the last two of the zippered hope bags so if you travel a lot and you prefer a zipper uh, my mom would only ever consider a bag with a zipper so it's also got a nice crossbody strap honestly this is a great purse Mm -hmm. um, like a travel bag. You can take the long handle off. It has clips. You can take it off. It's got pockets on the inside. It also has the little feet on the bottom to kind of help protect your bag. Um, no outside pockets on either one, but this one is called Sandy Trail. Beautiful kind of rustic um, brocade. And then that's what mandala. Mandala, yeah. yeah. Which, as I pull it back, you can really see you can, why. Yeah, um, this has been a real popular print from them before. So these are the last two of these. We're completely out of the other hope baskets. Um, oh yeah, uh, I forgot about these. <clears throat> this we have two of. Yep. Um, but this is a really nice um, like project pouch. Honestly, it's like velvet. So yeah. soft. <laughs> um, so really nice. But just, I'll say, basic project pouch. It does have the divider slash pocket. Um, this would be great for sweaters because um, you're going to hold at least like six to eight skeins of yarn in here easy. easily. Um, and it has the nice little handle. Yep. So you can just pop it on your wrist, take it to knit night, whatever. And this is a really pretty um, kind of mustard. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's like a velvet so nice so yeah this was surprising when we pulled it out of the mm -hmm. box i picked it up. i was like oh okay well, when i bought it it didn't say anything about like being a velvet texture it was just like yeah the bag and i was like oh yeah. it's cute we'll it's get like it suede and velvet yeah. put together it is because it's, it's not great. like velvet velvet but it's not suede either yeah it's that's a good combo so 
I'm out of things to talk about. Uh, yeah, it might be a real short episode <laughs> launching us back into podcasting regularly again. Exactly. So we do plan on, obviously, podcasting regularly. This was just a unexpected blip in yeah. the timetables. But um, never fear, we are still here. We will be closed for July 4th. Obviously, it is a Monday. And during the summer, we do... Um, we are closed Sunday and Monday. Um, I'm trying to think what else. sorry has got the zoomies. Yep, she's got the zoomies. Uh, we have our summer class schedule all online. You can take a look at that. Yep. We have uh, another series of kids camp classes coming in July. Um, and then beginner crochet and beginner knitting happening yep. in July as well. Um, August is, of course, Texas Yarn Trail at the end of the month. Uh, we will have some classes before Yarn Trail, but, of course, the week and what, it's like 10 days of Yarn Trail, mm -hmm. we will not have um, intensive classes. Yeah. It will be busy and fun, and we're going to have so many trunk shows and things like that going on. It's amazing. Um, so stay tuned for that. And if you don't have your Texas Yarn Trail tickets, you need to go ahead and get them. Texas Yarn Trail, texasyarntrail.com. That's what it is. You go, you purchase your trail guide, and you say what store you're going to pick it up at. Um, and you don't want to miss out because the prize baskets are un incredible, incredible prize baskets every year. The uh, it's like all of the stores we out do what we did last year every time. I don't know how we can keep getting better, but somehow it does. And it's just really, really fun. Everybody who goes absolutely loves it. I do think the custom made bags for us have sold out. Um, but if you can get on there and snag one, there may just be like one or two left. So highly recommend that. But um, yeah, it's kind of our summer event schedule. Once Texas Yarn Trail happens, then that's when we resume being open on Mondays again, kind of kickstarting us into the fall season and getting in all of our knitting um, and crocheting and crafting. I was listening to a podcast yesterday and they're already talking about Christmas gift knitting, um, which is crazy to think about, but also if you don't want to stress, it's a good idea yeah. to start thinking about that, honestly. Especially if you're one of those people who likes to knit a hat or a cowl or a scarf for everybody, go ahead and yeah, and just cast one on. Take it, it on your summer yeah. travels and yeah, and then you will be so much happier when Christmas rolls around because mm -hmm. you've got a head start. Same with your um, fall winter sweaters. You know, now's the time to start thinking about fall winter sweaters. Honestly, if you want to wear them this year. Um, if you start thinking about them in September, October, November, unless you're a real fast knitter, you're probably not going to get to wear it until the following year. FYI. Um, not saying you can't, but I would say kind of average is three months for a sweater for, I'll say, an average knitter who's not going to knit every single day. That's sad, though, if you don't knit every day. But I understand, you know, I don't actually knit every single day. There are a few days here and there where I don't knit. <laughs> uh, anyway, now we're just... Now we're just rambling. Rambling. So I'm going to stop talking <clears throat> and we will chat with you guys later and yeah. have a great rest of your day. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. Toodaloo. Bye. Bye.